This is John Fetterman, the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania and currently the Democrat candidate for U.S. Senate. His Republican challenger is TV's Dr. Mehmet Oz. Here's a recent video that Dr. Oz posted about the economy. I thought I'd do some grocery shopping. I'm at Wegner's and I, my wife wants some vegetables for crudite, right? Wrong. Dr. Oz was not at Wegner's because Wegner's is a place that does not exist. He took two real grocery stores, Wegmans and Radner's, and inadvertently created a portmanteau. Wegner's. I thought I'd do some grocery shopping. I'm at Wegner's. Was this a mistake? <laughs> yes. But to be fair, Dr. Oz shouldn't have to shoulder all the blame because this was obviously being recorded on a smartphone and the person recording didn't catch the mistake or tell Oz to start over. Furthermore, whoever uploaded it to the internet didn't catch Oz's error, nor did the person who posted it on social media. <laughs> anyway, moving on. My wife wants some vegetables for crudite. What? So here's a broccoli. That's two bucks, not a ton of broccoli there. There's some asparagus, that's four dollars. Yep, carrots, that's four more dollars. That's ten dollars of vegetables there. And then we need some guacamole, that's four dollars more. Okay, there's three types of vegetables and guacamole. So far, this is kind of a weak crudite platter. I feel like it's missing something. And she loves salsa, yeah, there's salsa there. Six dollars? Must be a shortage of salsa. Wait, Dr. Oz's wife wants to dip carrots, broccoli, and asparagus into salsa? Who the hell does that? Guys, that's $20 for crudite, and this doesn't include the tequila. I mean, that's outrageous. And we got Joe Biden to thank for this. Ugh, when Trump was in office, you could buy crudite and a bottle of tequila without having to declare bankruptcy. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. Now, I get what Dr. Oz was trying to do. Talk about how inflation has made the cost of groceries more expensive. And talking about a thing that's on everyone's mind, it's a good thing. However, instead of talking about the price of breakfast cereal or eggs or milk or lunch meat, Dr. Oz went with vegetable platters. Excuse me, crudite. Anyway, the now infamous crudite clip was posted back on April 6th and it took Fetterman's campaign nearly four and a half months to seize on it. In PA, we call this a veggie tray. No shit. Also, I want to point out that he said it weird. Veggie tray. Veggie tray. Veggie tray. Eh, whatever. Anyway, Dr. Oz and his wife weren't making a veggie tray. They were making crudite, which are vegetables served on a platter and if they wanted a veggie tray, they would have bought a veggie tray. All Dr. Oz had to say was that he wanted to make a salad. What a moron. But to John Fetterman, cutting up vegetables and making your own platter instead of buying them pre-cut and packaged is considered bourgeois or something. And if this looks anything other than a veggie tray to you, then I am not your candidate. In other words, if you're one of those bougie Pennsylvanians who prepare their own dishes or have ever even used the word crudite or have ever tuned into the Food Network, don't vote for John Fetterman. Of all the words that bring to your mind when you hear the word steelworkers, does the word crudite come to your mind? Why would it? That's not a word that's going to come to my mind. Crudite. Seriously, think about it. John Fetterman not only thinks that Pennsylvania residents and members of the United Steelworkers Union are so uncultured that crudite could never be part of their vocabulary, but he, he also thinks that they're completely uninterested in learning new concepts or words. And in a way, this all reminds me of January 2019, when then President Trump hosted the Clemson Tigers football team at the White House and served fast food from Wendy's, McDonald's and Burger King, among others, because of a government shutdown. And the press and political pundits freaking lost it. Trump serving fast food to the Clemson players isn't just insulting, it's especially bad for elite athletes. Wow, not only is Trump a danger to the Republic, but he's also trying to clog Americans' arteries. What I'm saying to you is that at the end of the day, these are elite athletes that are national champions 
and this is how you greet them. It's disgraceful. It was classless. It was wrong to do. He could do better than that. I don't know. I, well, not, I, I guess not. I took it very differently when I saw him giving the football players. It's it's a predominantly black sport and fast food. My thought went went a very different place. So giving black athletes fast food is racist. These people are out of their minds. The controversy around Trump's fast food football feast explained. People are calling Trump's McDonald's and Wendy's meal for the Clemson Tigers racist and classist. So to recap. When a Republican president serves fast food to American athletes, it's classist and not fancy enough. But when Republican candidate Dr. Oz talks about making crudite, it's too fancy. Got it. In other words, Democrats will always find a way to complain about Republicans no matter what. Veggie tray. And speaking of groceries, Fetterman is attacking Dr. Oz regarding high grocery prices. On August 15th, Fetterman tweeted, I see for myself how expensive groceries are whenever I go to Giant Eagle or Aldi's. Dr. Oz does not have a plan to bring these prices down, but I do. Strengthen supply chains, crack down on corporate price gouging, and make more shit in America. I'm sorry, that is not a plan. Fetterman is claiming, without evidence by the way, that the price of groceries are high because of corporate price gouging. And it's not price gouging causing high prices, it's inflation, which is currently 8.5% higher than it was a year ago. Then he says that to bring grocery prices down, we have to make more sh** in America. Making more sh** in America is not a solution because the majority of items in a grocery store come from the United States. Or maybe John Fetterman thinks that we import all of our groceries from other countries like China or something, I don't know. In the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette article that Fetterman tweeted out, there's no mention of price gouging, but it does feature a table showing how prices have increased in the last year. And with the exception of post-spoon-sized shredded wheat, which is made in Canada, Everything on this list is made, produced, or grown right here in the United States. So John Fetterman accuses Dr. Oz of not having a plan, but all Fetterman has is empty rhetoric. And then there's the attack on the fact that Dr. Oz is wealthy and owns several properties. The Daily Beast published this hit piece on Dr. Oz, which featured the following video. How many houses do you own? Uh, well, I legitimately, I, I own two houses, but um, one of them we're building on, the other ones I rent. Whoa, stop the presses. Dr. Oz said that he owns two houses when he actually owns ten. Oh wait, this headline is a lie. According to Dr. Oz's financial disclosure report, he owns ten properties. And this is not a secret. What is actually the issue at hand here is that Dr. Oz said, I rent when he actually should have said, I rent out. But wow, what a scoop. And when you actually read the article, the reporter admits that Oz does rent out some of these properties. Furthermore, the Daily Beast admits that this is public knowledge and lists every single property with details taken from Oz's financial disclosure. But look at the headline again. Video shows Dr. Oz saying he has two houses when he actually has 10. But that headline is false because he does not own 10 houses. And again, as the Daily Beast points out, three of them are condos, which are not houses. One of them is a cattle farm, also not a house. And one is being used as a student dormitory in Turkey, again, not a house. Which, according to Oz's financial disclosure, he leases to the Ministry of Education for free. Does that sound like he owns 10 houses? No. The Daily Beast is slamming him for semantics, but then they turn around and they put out a blatantly false headline by saying that he owns 10 houses. And in the meantime, John Fetterman, who can't attack Dr. Oz on policy, is demonizing Oz for being wealthy. So, one of the difference between me and Dr. Oz? He has 10 mansions. Well, that's a lie. Does that mean that the Daily Beast is going to publish an article fact-checking Fetterman's false claim that Oz owns 10 mansions? 
Nah, not the same thing. But even if Dr. Oz had 20 houses, who cares? He's worth at least $100 million. If you had that much money, I bet you'd be buying a lot of stuff. Ugh, I hate that this guy is making me defend Dr. Oz of all people. I gave away the... I gave away the lieutenant governor governor in Pennsylvania, the only lieutenant governor in the history to do that. I gave away the lieutenant governor governor in Pennsylvania, the only lieutenant governor in the history to do that. That is literally nonsense, but watch Democrats clap for it anyway. I gave away the lieutenant governor governor in Pennsylvania, the only lieutenant governor in the history to do that. Okay, what Fetterman was trying to say is that he's the first lieutenant governor not to live in the official lieutenant governor's residence in Indian Town Gap. Instead, he chooses to live at his residence in Braddock, which is approximately 186 miles from the state capital. So let me get this straight. Instead of taking advantage of living at a home only 23 miles and a half hour drive from Harrisburg, the state capital, he lives almost four hours away in Braddock, and he's bragging about it? Well, at least he's trying to. But wow, he refused to live in the official residence. <laughs> what a hero, huh, Pennsylvania? And speaking of heroism, John Fetterman is a huge proponent for saving the Earth. We only have one planet, and it's under siege, thanks to climate change. It's time for bold action. Climate change is an existential threat, we need to transition to clean energy as quickly as possible. And yet, here's John Fetterman filling up his Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport at the gas station in a campaign ad ironically titled Climate Justice. But hey, maybe his other vehicle is like a hybrid or an EV because doing something about climate change is a moral imperative and a practical one. As a regular resident here in Pennsylvania, I, like you, miss those extra 30 or 40 bucks with every fill up. I just filled up my own Ram and it was nearly a hundred bucks. So here's a question for John Fetterman. When you commute from Braddock to Harrisburg in your Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport or Dodge Ram, two vehicles that maybe get 25 miles per gallon highway if you're lucky, how is that positively contributing to the climate? Oh right, it's not. Because John Fetterman's a hypocrite. I know you're shocked. Anyway, that's it for now. Be sure to hit that like button. Check out these videos that you absolutely missed because channel views are like super low. And be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. And as always, I hope to see you next time. If there is next time.